morning. We are now in Pennsylvania. Last week we were in Utah visiting a friend and this week we are in Pennsylvania visiting a friend. Our friend lives an hour outside of Philly and we are going to go and take a day trip. We have a full day planned in Philadelphia mixed with some food places and some historical places and so we plan on getting a full experience of Philadelphia. Philadelphia is of course to get breakfast and we are going to go get some donuts. Our friend that we met in China actually said that we need to try federal donuts because he said they're pretty dang good and that's what we're going to do. We're going to the federal donuts in city center so we found a place to park our car and now we're just walking down the street. They have a really nice little downtown area and it's the weekend so everyone's out walking around. We just went to Federal Donuts. Our friend told us to come here and when we arrived, we were a little bit confused at the sign because it has like a big chicken in it. But we went inside and it turns out it is a chicken and donut shop, which is awesome because fried chicken goes with everything. I love me a buffalo chicken sandwich. <laughs> yeah, very good. The bread is super soft, the chicken's crunchy, the pickle gives it a nice little tangy flavor. Their ranch is pretty good as well. You can't go wrong with ranch. We just finished eating our chicken sandwich at the Federal Donut Shop. And it was delicious. Now we're back in the car and we're going to eat the donuts that we got from Federal Donuts. I got the Old Fashioned, which I'm pretty excited about. And Kelly got a, a peanut butter glazed donut. I don't think I've ever had a peanut butter donut before. This is the first. It's definitely going to be messy though, because it has all the peanut crumbles on the top. Hmm. Mm hmm It's like a peanut cake. Like, it's super soft, like the, the, it's like a cake texture, not just like your donut that you would expect. And, the peanuts make it taste like a Reese's or a Butterfinger almost. I don't know how to explain this. It's, it doesn't taste like your average donut. I got the old fashioned donut, which is classic glazed donut. Uh, and it has a thick coating of glaze on it. So my mouth is watering looking at it. I definitely see what Kelly mean. Like the inside is like super cakey. It's not like the fried, regular fried donut inside. It's kind of like dense, it's a dense donut. And it, but it's very good, very good. You can still taste like the fried outside, but it's just so much more dense. We are now on our way to the art museum here in Philadelphia, which also has the Rocky Steps in front of it, so. I get to run up the rocky steps today. We drove all the way up to the Museum of Art and then finally realized, oh, we need to find parking. And parking, it was not very easy for us to find. We kept on like driving past places and thought, oh, we can park here. No, we can't park there. And, but finally we found a spot. Labor Day holiday weekend. So everyone is out and about visiting Philadelphia. Right across the street from us is the Philadelphia Art Museum, which is where Rocky ran up the steps to train. It costs $30 per person to get into the art museum, which neither of us are wanting to pay. Plus it's, at, it's late in the afternoon and we still need to make it to the other historical spots here in Philadelphia before five o'clock so we don't miss anything. Uh, it does look like there is a Rocky statue outside and people are lined up to take a picture with Rocky, but I think, I don't think we need a picture with Rocky. Or do you want a picture with Rocky? Uh, we can pass him by and say hello. Yeah, we'll say hello to Rocky, but we don't need it. Need one with the statue. 
These are the iconic steps of the Rocky movie where Rocky Balboa runs up the steps and does his little yes and then boxes. So it's time for me to also do it because that's what you have to do. That's what we keep on saying everyone do. So cue the music, cue the montage. Let's do it. He was supposed to stop and wait for me to get to the other side. He just kept going. <laughs> if Rocky really wants a challenge, he should go to China and go to the top where a Buddhist temple's at. Because these stairs, easy, easy. Kids get a couple thousand steps in, then we'll see what's going on. The outside of the Philadelphia Art Museum is very beautiful. You can see the sculptures at the top and it has beautiful colorings as well. But I'm not gonna lie, I didn't actually know what the Rocky scene was from the Philadelphia, so I did have to do a quick YouTube search before coming here so I can recreate the moment. But it is very pretty and a lot of people are doing the Rocky running up the steps and doing the air punches and all so you're not gonna look weird doing it it's very common to do it here i'm not gonna lie it feels awesome doing the rocky run and then the fists up in the air and air punches it's a ton of fun and it's a good confidence booster you know getting yeah i'm strong i just ran up some steps the show doesn't lie when they say it's always sunny in philadelphia because it's hot today. <laughs> Rewarding myself after a hard workout with some ice cream. Blue raspberry. Sour. As we walk through the outskirts and downtown of Philadelphia, we've been noticing all of the apartment buildings. They are super cute and they all have like their own unique style. But if you also look closely, you're going to realize that every section that I'm guessing is one property is a different color. We are now at Reading Terminal Market. Unfortunately, we didn't look up the days that it was open and the place that I wanted to go to is closed. So I can't get my pulled pork sandwich. So we decided to go to the sandwich place next door called Herschel's, which also has some of the city's best sandwiches, pastrami and corned beef and brisket sandwiches. So I went ahead and got the corned beef and Kelly got the pastrami. And these sandwiches are huge, so we might have made a mistake by ordering one for ourselves, but I'm super ready to dig in. Oh yeah. Mm. Oh, it's so good. The meat's so tender. Oh, I got the one with the coleslaw on it and their special sauce called the Rachel. It definitely pairs well, really well with the meat. You can see the melted cheese and their sauce just all over it. the pastrami and just by looking at this I know we ordered way too much food could have easily done a half for myself their secret sauce is so good it's a little sweet and tangy the meat is perfectly tender Swiss cheese always goes well and everything and so does the coleslaw I'm sure I have sauce all over my face right now but I'm gonna keep eating if you're not feeling up for a meat sandwich, there are plenty of options to choose from. There are bagels, I've seen pastries, there's a sushi restaurant, there's a Shanghainese place, there's a vegan deli right next door to us. Right down here, there's a Caribbean place, there's a Thai food. There are so many options to choose from. So if you come here hungry, it's gonna be pretty hard to figure out what you want. There's always room for dessert, even if we had ice cream a little bit earlier. It was just ice, flavored ice. But we decided to go to the famous 4th Street Cookies, where it says they bake these cookies fresh every day. We got a chocolate chip and an M&M cookie. Decided to eat our cookies on our way uh, to the next place, which is the Liberty Bell. Can't wait to try this cookie. Mmm. That's comforting. Very sweet, chocolatey. Classic cookie. I'm just gonna go home and cook it. My turn to try the M&M cookie. 
I tried a bit of James's chocolate chip and it tasted like a homemade cookie, so I'm pretty excited. Mmm. This one's pretty good, but I'd definitely pick the chocolate chip cookie over the M&M cookie any day. This house is the house that Thomas Jefferson lived in while he wrote the Declaration of Independence. It's really interesting to see that they kind of just like cut this part of the building away from the rest. And all around it are these really tall buildings that were built later, but they decided to keep this little piece of history. Behind me is the Independence Hall where the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence was signed. And also the Liberty Bell is stored right here in this building, which has kind of a line into it. We are now in line to see the Liberty Bell. It's a very long line. It wraps around outside and it's inside as well. It's a free entry though. We just walked through the hall to see the Liberty Bell, which is a symbol for the United States about freedom and liberty for its people. We saw the bell and the bell is actually a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. It's a sizable bell and the crack in it is huge. Uh, but we learned that that crack that it has is actually a repair from a small fissure that started to form in the bell and they made the crack wider by drilling into the bell but this repair failed and it started to crack even more. So the bell has since then been retired and now it stands for people to admire as the Liberty Bell. Right next to the Liberty Bell is the Independence Hall, which is where the Declaration was debated and signed. We were going to go inside of the Independence Hall and look around the courtyard at all the different monumental buildings inside. However, we don't want to pay for any more parking because what turned into what I thought was only $3 an hour has gone up every hour and now we've paid $20 for three hours, which is crazy to me. I don't know how that math works out at all. It's like it was multiplying <laughs> instead of just $3 every hour. But yeah, so we're trying to get back before we pay any more money for our parking. <laughs> We attempted to get our parking ticket validated at the place we ate lunch and they were more than willing to validate it except we parked at the wrong spot. We are on Filbert Street and Filbert Street is the only street that they can't validate. They can validate the one off 11th and 12th and then the parking lots that are associated with the Reading Thanks. Terminal Market. But not this one. Unfortunately, we didn't do that and we paid $20 for parking for three hours, which sucks. It's all right. We're on to our next spot. Hello, I'm calling because I would like to make an order for pickup. Order a pizza order for, I believe it's the six. It's the half pepperoni, half sausage. Oh, he just ordered from Angelo's Pizzeria, which we have been told has amazing cheesesteaks and pizza. There is no dine-in. You have to either call to order or order when you arrive. It closes at 7 p.m. and it's just now 6. And it usually takes 30 minutes to get food. So we are now on our way. James is being the trusty navigator. And it's cash only, so we also need to find an ATM. Angelo's pizza is the pizza for you and me. Kelly has picked up the pizza. And they gave her a QR code of a list of spots that we can go find a place to eat and eat the pizza. Yeah, so we are walking down to just like a small park nearby that apparently has benches and shaded area so we can enjoy this delicious pizza and cheesecake. Cheese steak. <laughs> cheese steak. A Philly cheese steak. Um, Hopefully one of the best. <laughs> it looks really good. I like that they put basil on top of it. We got the half pepperoni and half sausage pizza. And then of course we got our Philly cheesesteak right here, still wrapped. So we're gonna try a little bit of the pizza and a little bit of the Philly and then save the rest and bring it back to our friends. I'm ready to dig in. We're gonna start, I'm gonna start with the sausage. Mm. Yeah, it's a pretty good piece of pizza. <laughs> I mean, the crust is like fully 
cooked, it's crunchy. I got cheese, sauce. To me, it's just an average pizza. Let's see what Kelly thinks. We were recommended this place by a few people and it, the line was out the door. There's no indoor seating and it's busy. I'm gonna try the pepperoni. Let's see if it's worth the hype. It's good. Is it, yeah, it does taste like an average pizza. Like. Maybe we just need it the flavor of pizza, but it tastes the same. But the cheesecake has to be good. Cheesesteak must be good. We're on to the Philly cheesesteak, which I'm super excited about because this is what this food item, we're in the city, it's named after. It obviously has to be good if we get it from here, doesn't Isn't that right, Kelly? We got ours with the beef, the cheese, the onions, and then the peppers on top. And all of it looks really good. I mean, this looks, this looks good. This looks way better than this pizza that we got. All right, first bite. Mmm, that's a good, that's a good Philly cheesesteak. Nice and cheesy, meaty. I really like the pepper that they put on it. It's nice and sweet. Back in Kansas City, whenever we would get one of these, all the peppers are like super cut up and minced. But these are like thick cuts, and they almost look like they're, they're grilled or something. The Philly cheesesteak definitely outshines the pizza, so I would really recommend getting the Philly cheesesteak if you're gonna go to Angelo's. While walking around in Pennsylvania, I've really started to be observant of all of the buildings and the different designs on everything. So obviously I needed to do a quick little research to figure out why this is. I found a blog post that kind of talks about the history and because she studied architecture, the history about why and it is because these homes were built during West Philadelphia's growing age of a streetcar society and to attract the middle class, they were building these Victorian style homes, but they were splitting the houses in half so it could be more affordable. So in the area that our friend lives in, you could see this a lot more with the pointed style homes. They are huge, but they are split into two. Either a little sliver is left in between the buildings or they are connected as one. And I just find that so interesting because in the Midwest we don't have that because every place is so spread out. But it's just how the property was developed here in Pennsylvania. We've ate local Philly food, seen historical sites, but now it's time for us to say goodbye to Philadelphia. We had a fun time in Philly and if you liked our video make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel to watch our travels throughout the rest of the United States and coming soon the world. Oh James you're gonna have to merge. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.